بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد The 26th juz or para of the Quran commences with Surah Al-Ahqaf and this surah basically begins by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, establishing the fact that he is the only true God and the only one deserving of worship. And that is by mentioning that he is the creator of everything and asking, do these false gods that they worship and associate uh, as partners with Allah, what have they created? What have these false gods created? Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala moves on to talk about, uh, uh, once again, refuting the, the, the disbelievers and their false accusations against uh, the truth of the Qur'an and the Prophet Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, brings our attention to the importance of the status of our parents, commanding us to obey our parents and uh, you know, deal with them respect, respectfully. And Allah details how our mothers, especially, uh, you know, they bore us in their, uh, you know, uh, through throughout their pregnancy, and then not only that, but after that, uh, you know, uh, feeding us and so on and so forth. And then Allah mentions how a believer, uh, you know, uh, deals with his parents, thanking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for his parents and praying for his parents. And uh, the opposite of that, how the disbeliever reacts uh, concerning his parents. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions other things in this surah. And then towards the, uh, after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions uh, the story of Ad and how uh, they were annihilated, how they were destroyed. And one of the lessons that we learn from here, uh, from this story is, Sometimes a blessing, uh, or sometimes uh, the punishment of Allah comes in the in the guise of a blessing, and so the people of uh, of Hud alayhi salam had, uh, they saw uh, you know clouds gathering and coming their way, and you know they said this must be rain, and uh, you know this is something good for us. Winds were coming, but yet in those winds. And in those clouds was the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were destroyed with, uh, with those wings. Uh, after that, at the end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the jinn and how they heard the message of the Qur'an and right away they, they accepted its message. Uh, after that, we move on to surah Muhammad. And surah Muhammad also referred to as surah al-qital, uh, the, the surah of fighting uh, basically it was revealed in Medina and it, it, it mentions about fighting uh, jihad in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the virtue of that uh, and refuting the, the hypocrites uh, and uh, refuting the hypocrites and the disbelievers and so it starts by talking about the disbelievers inna ladina kafaru uh, Allah talks about the disbelievers and how they, uh, you know, try to ward people uh, away from Islam. Uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, mentions to us uh, the, the, about Jannah and how the believers, uh, they, they will, uh, you know, enjoy the blessings of Jannah uh, and the rivers of Jannah and how the rivers are of different kinds. And then Allah talks about the punishment of the disbelievers, the kuffar, in the hellfire and what they will receive. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is discussion of the hypocrites uh, in, in, the, in the rest of the surah, in the rest of Surah uh, Muhammad. Uh, after that, we move on to Surah Al-Fatih, which was also revealed uh, in the Medina stage of the da'wah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, surah Al-Fatih is a very, very uh, significant surah. Uh, it basically talks about the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. Uh, basically, the pledge 
that the Prophet ﷺ took with the companions and it, it mentions the virtue of the companions who gave their pledge to the Prophet ﷺ. Uh, and this was a, at a very, very difficult time, uh, at a time when they were going to Mecca and hoping to uh, perform their Umrah, but they were stopped. They were stopped by the Kuffar. And the Prophet ﷺ basically signed an agreement uh, with with the mushrikun, so it basically that that was very heavy uh, on the companions. Uh, but Allah Subhanahu wa Taala referred to this as a victory. He referred to it as a huge breakthrough for the believers, and and so it should not be looked at as something uh, as something negative, but rather there was a huge victory in that, and that is what this surah basically uh, talks about. And at the very end of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the description of the believers, how they are merciful. Uh, those who are with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are severe against the disbelievers, but merciful uh, with the believers. After that, we have surah uh, al-Hujurat. Surah al-Hujurat is also a very, very significant surah. It is also uh, known as the surah that mentions uh, the most important akhlaq and manners that the that that the uh, Muslim society is supposed to have, and so it talks about uh, you know different kinds of adab and akhlaq that the believers are supposed to have uh, with one another, uh, and this basically uh, builds that community and that bond that is supposed to be there, the bond of iman that is supposed to be there between the believers and that's why Allah refers uh, in this surah uh, to the fact that the believers are brothers uh, establishing that brotherhood uh, between the believers uh, there are many many adab that are mentioned also there is uh, in this surah uh, mention of the fact that Allah created us in nations and tribes uh, but none of that is important the most important thing is taqwa and so it is the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that makes people superior in the sight of Allah, not our ethnic backgrounds or our blood or our race. After that we have Surah Qaf. And Surah Qaf uh, is uh, a very, very scary uh, surah that highlights, uh, that highlights death and uh, what happens after death and what will happen on the Day of Judgment uh, and how um, you know uh, each and every single one of us has two angels who are recording every single thing that we say. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the surah uh, by mentioning uh, you know some of his signs in his creation and uh, also establishing that there is life after death uh, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, uh, you know, um, uh, that we, each and every single one of us, uh, Allah knows about us more than we know about our own selves. And that we have two angels recording everything that we say. And that, uh, you know, the, at the time of death, uh, there is pain. And, uh, you know, the angel of death comes to take away our souls. And it is at that, it is at that time that we wake up from our heedless state. You know, throughout this life, throughout this life we are heedless. Uh, you know, forgetting about that inevitable reality, forgetting about death and what comes after death. But at that point, uh, our heedlessness, uh, you know, will go away and our sight will become sharp and uh, we will see, uh, you know, the reality of death and what comes after death at that point. And Allah mentions about the hellfire, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the conversation that Allah will have with the hellfire and how the believers will enter Jannah and the greatest uh, of their pleasures will be to be uh, to be looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the surah concludes by Allah mentioning once again about uh, the hereafter, uh, talking about the blowing of the trumpet and uh, how the people will be gathered and how they will come out of their graves. Uh, then after that, uh, at the very end of this juz, we have uh, half of Surah Al-Dhariyat. Surah Al-Dhariyat 
uh, talks about the Quran being the truth from Allah and also the day of resurrection that it will happen without a doubt and uh, it talks about uh, the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam and how when the angels came to him uh, he uh, basically honored them and slaughtered for them and uh, you know this is where the Jews ends and then we will uh, continue uh, the rest of the surah in the next session bi'ithnillahi ta'ala until then subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik